What is up, everybody? Ken here from Ungraduated Media, your channel for all things physical media when it comes to movies, books, and music that make you rethink. It's not just the entertainment and the collecting and the packaging here. We discuss the movies and what they really do from a philosophical perspective, how we can learn from this stuff. Of course, the music and the books as well, too. So if you like that kind of stuff and you're into it, hit that subscribe button. Do comment below and tell me what you want to see more of, whether it's movies, books, and music that you think add that kind of perspective into life. So today, I thought I'd do something a little different. This is my first list video, and it's the perfect time of the year. It's Halloween. I figured let's do 31 movies that not only scare you, but make you think, because tis the season for spooky movies. So disclaimer, I guess, hey, these aren't necessarily what I would say the absolute best Halloween movies. These are some of my favorites. <laughs> These are just some of my own personal favorites that, yes, will scare you and help you get into the season, but leave you thinking a little bit, maybe even a little bit better than what you were prior to watching because you can learn some perspective from most of these movies. So without any further delay, let's jump right into it. Here we go, starting off the first one. This is The People Under the Stairs, Wes Craven's classic film. This is one that I actually didn't know that much about. My wife was a big fan of it, and it's pretty creepy. It has its strange moments with the two parents right here. But, of course, the kid in the film and what happens with The People Under the Stairs, what is going on with The People Under the Stairs, very creepy Kind of has some psychological undertones. Definitely a great one that I think kicks us off. This is the 4K transfer, collector's edition, People Under the Stairs from Scream Factory. So I'm not going to try to talk too much about each film so that this isn't going to be too long of a video. But started it off with, I think, a banger here, People Under the Stairs. Now, as I work through this list, I'm trying to put some films in here that are not so well known, not going to just be your typical run of the mill type of stuff. Next up, we have John Carpenter, you're going to hear a couple of these throughout this video. This is Prince of Darkness, probably not one of his most known films, of course, being so well known for Halloween. This is one that I think needs to be seen. This is a older film that has to do with some college students who basically let a gin, an evil spirit, if you will, or a curse out of the bottle, the genie in the bottle, if you will. It's not really a genie, but something that hadn't been around for 7 million years and all kinds of horror is unleashed upon humanity. So this is John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. This is the Scream Factory edition of this film. I have it elsewhere, hence this package is still unopened. I think I got this from FYE. Hadn't been to FYE in forever and saw this there and didn't have this version, decided to pick it up. Great one in at number two. No particular order, by the way, in these. Just thought I would just put some of the best movies that I think help us think, but also can scare us for the holiday season. Here's one from Criterion, Funny Games. Now, this is a German version of kind of like a Devil's Rejects, a breaking and entering type of film where just hideous things are done to this family. And it is one that I think, again, merits being watched. Now, I watched this, I think, when I was traveling and streamed it on the Criterion channel. So this is unopened. But this is a great one that if you want to have some perspective on just how bad humanity can actually be, there's numerous films like this. But this one's different because it's a German take on a breaking and entering and torturing and tormenting a family. And it's just it's pretty messed up stuff. So... I think a good one that deserves to be on this list, Funny Games from Criterion. You can stream a lot of these movies probably, but you know here on this channel, it's all about the physical media. So that's number three. Number four, Dario Argento's Suspiria. This is the 4K edition. Of course, this film should be pretty well known. And the reds, the colors inside of this. Now, this film was remade. I have not seen the remake, but Dario Argento, known for so much of his classic giallos from the 70s and 80s. This one dealing with a dance student that shows up and has all kinds of crazy things begin to happen to her friends. It's just an interesting perspective with some philosophical undertones. If you haven't seen Suspiria, 
now is as good as time as ever to check it out. That is in at number four. Moving on to number five, one of my wife and I's favorite horror movies is The Conjuring. This is just the basic Blu-ray, and what I think makes this film such a great one is it's based on real stories. This is from the true case files of the Warrens, and I want to say this took place in Connecticut. Not 100% sure of that. You can put your thoughts on this film down in the comments. Leave your thoughts on any of these films, of course, in terms of... uh, if you've seen them, if they're some of your favorites or not, Conjuring, anything that has to deal with possession, and uh, certainly there are plenty of them out there for Halloween, The Exorcist being the most well-known probably, but when it comes to true stories, because this shit is real, okay, I don't care what anyone says, you can have your own beliefs out there, it can be faked, it's faked or hoaxed of course, but I believe that possession type of stuff is nothing to joke around with, and The Conjuring brings it of course into that perspective and yeah it'll scare the hell out of you as well too so that is in at number five the conjuring number six this one's kind of different uh dead and buried this is the lenticular color cover that is from blue underground don't know how much it's wanting to move can't really see it too well it's a big blown up picture of a face and then Yeah, my light's not letting you see it, but this is from Blue Underground, Dead and Buried. It's an interesting film about a small town, kind of like a Cape Town type of a location, almost like a harbor where visitors start showing up dead, then the townspeople start showing up dead, and you're wondering what in the world's going on. It has a very interesting twist and a very good ending, I think, to this film. It's one that's not probably very highly spoken of. It's an older film from, I think, the 80s. I don't know the exact release date on this here, but pretty sure it's from the 80s. The creators of Alien is who this is being brought to us by. It was a good one. I picked this up, I'd say, probably last year at some point, maybe earlier on this year, and was pretty surprised by it. So Dead and Buried, good perspective film, and definitely one that fits this time of year for sure in at number six. Number seven, this is an absolute classic that I didn't know nothing about until Vinegar Syndrome. So here we have Demon Wind. has to do with a kid trying to figure out what happened to his grandparents. He returns to the scene of the crime where they were brutally murdered, trying to unravel what caused it, and ignoring the words of the locals about a curse proceeds anyways, and the curse, the Demon Wind, it does take hold. And this is just an all-time great from Vinegar Syndrome. I think you could probably find this online somewhere. Still available from Vinegar Syndrome as well, too, uh, although it may be going quickly. This is It's got a great slipcover. I missed out on the slipcover edition. I'll have to pick that up at some point. But that's number seven, Demon Wind. Number eight. I don't know if I'd call this a Halloween film, but it is a creepy, eerie film that definitely makes you think, and that is Eraserhead. From David Lynch, oh my goodness, this film from 1979-77. It's just wild, okay? It's in black and white. It is a mind bender, okay? Puts you in the mood in terms of creepiness. It's not that long of a film. Basically, it has to do with a strange alien baby that he has with this kind of like one night stand situation. And it's A lot of people question on, is this film about the fears of fatherhood, or is it more than that? I think it's more than that. It's from the mind of David Lynch. This is the Criterion Edition. If you've not seen Eraserhead, just do yourself a favor and see it, and let me know in the comments what the hell you think it means. So that is number eight. Number nine. This is kind of just a fun you got to have fun sometimes type of movie. And this is from Vinegar Syndrome as well. This is Spookies. It's just kind of cheesy, B-rated goodness, B-movie, straight to video. It's just one of those films that is just classic Halloween fun. And sometimes you got to have some of that in there, and you're not going to learn a ton from it. So this is one of those films, Spookies. But you got to check it out if you haven't from Vinegar Syndrome or wherever you can get it online, that is number nine. And number 10, also from Vinegar Syndrome, 
This is Edgar Allan Poe's The House of Usher. So a lot of people probably have heard of The House of Usher, but how many of you have actually seen it? It is a classic one. This, of course, with the packaging from Vinegar Syndrome. This is a Vinegar Syndrome archive, which they do a great job of numbering their editions. This is kind of hard for y'all to see. You're not going to be able to see it with the glare, but it is number 2,729. Yeah, forget about it. I'm going to stop trying to even show you. But <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe's The House of Usher. If this is one that you have not yet seen, again, great time of the year to see it in at number 10. So that's the first 10. I think we're doing pretty well on time so far in this film. So let's keep going on to the next. Somehow just continuing in the Vinegar Syndrome uh, genre here. I promise you there's not a whole lot more of those, but this is Shallow Grave. Now, I love this film. It kind of caught me by surprise. It has to deal with, I think, it's probably set in the summer, late summer, but a fall-ish type of environment where a group of girls go out on a trip, a road trip, and they're in the middle of Nowhereville, USA. You can kind of tell that it's a little strange, a little weird, but uh, they end up finding these guys that torment them and it turns out they think a police officer is someone that should help and save them that is not the case he ends up being a killer himself and hunts down these girls or at least attempts to so without giving away the film it's a pretty good one that i think is worth a watch this time of the year in terms of the halloween season so that is Shallow Grave. Looks like it's actually from Medley, Georgia, is where they're basing this film. Medley, Georgia. I don't know if it's a real place or not, but caught me by surprise, and it's a more recent numbered... Let's see, this is... Yeah, 368 from Vinegar Syndrome. So that is number 11. On the number 12, Insidious. I don't think a whole lot more has to be said about this film. You either probably love it or you hate it, but it is a creepy film, of course. This is a more recent film from, I think, what was this? Uh, I want to say 2014, somewhere in around there, 2012. I'm not seeing a date on this, but this is a more modern classic. There you go. Sorry about the glare. I'm trying to show you as best I can with this lighting down here, but some of the most shivery and What's that? Indelible images I've ever seen in any horror film in decades. So definitely creepy, definitely eerie, definitely a great film to watch. Kind of a family film, uh, depending on how safe you want to be with the family. I don't know how much you want to watch of rated R. It's actually PG-13, so yeah, it's probably more family safe, but definitely one for this time of the year in at number 12. 13. This is another John Carpenter, The Fog. Now, just a great time of year to watch this. The atmosphere with this film being a fall, kind of cold, dark, dank, just a perfect season, if you will, for this film is the time right now to watch it. John Carpenter's The Fog. This is the second John Carpenter I think I have in this list so far. It is probably one of his more underrated or not as well-known films. So check out The Fog, not The Mist. It's different. This is John Carpenter's The Fog. Great one for this time of year to watch with the family. It will put you in the mood for sure. So that is in at number, lucky number 13, The Fog. This is the steelbook, actually that was more recently released that I have not yet opened, but I have watched and certainly enjoyed this John Carpenter film. I love a lot of John Carpenter, if you can't tell. I pump him up a lot. Number 14, another more recently released still book. This is Knock at the Cabin. Now, some people hated this film because they thought it was such a strange concept. This is the still book. It involves four characters who show up to the home of a gay couple, actually, and they give them this strange proposition that they have to kill one or the other. And they don't care who kills who, but the world depends on it. The world will come to an end if they do not sacrifice one of, or the other. And there's, of course, a child in this film as well, too. It is a very strange film, but it, it's got that eerie, what the hell is going on 
could this actually even happen? And throughout the film, of course, the couple doesn't believe a single bit of this until they give the warnings of what's going to happen. And sure enough, as it begins to happen, they begin to believe this is down to us to save all of humanity and to allow their child to, of course, have a life. So knock at the cabin, creepy, eerie, wouldn't call it a horror, but it's a psychological horror, I guess, or I guess it's just interesting. So worth the watch at number 14. Number 15, all-time classic. This is one of those ones I just had to throw on a list. It's the original Saw. So enough said. This one with the entire ending to it, I don't know how you go wrong with it. I, I haven't watched all of the Saw. I probably kind of fell off around Saw 3 or 4. I got to get back into all of them. But this is the Best Buy exclusive 4K steelbook from Lionsgate. The Saw, or Saw. <laughs> you got to go see Saw if you haven't. Um, by now, I'm sure many of people who, have, who who are watching this know this film. It's a great horror, lots of gore, and of course, crazy tests. But psychologically speaking, man, great psychological thriller. So where are we at there? That was 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 16, Event Horizon. This is the 4K with Lawrence Fishburne and Sam Neill. You guys know who these two are folks are but this is a sci-fi horror but i think it fits this time of year because of course it's creepy man i mean it deals with a ship that goes intra-dimension right they claim to hell and back and this thing is found in space and it's one of those films that it scares the hell out of you i, I know when i first saw this film i was probably 12 or 13 it scarred me this thing uh definitely stuck with me over the years and when I saw this had a 4K release, I had to pick it up. So that is Event Horizon, a great sci-fi horror that maybe not doesn't quite fit Halloween, but it has the horror feel down to it. So definitely worth a watch. Another John Carpenter. Now, no list probably is complete. I'm trying to make this, again, not such big names like Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th and Halloween, all of those, of course, Exorcist would be on anyone's list, but I had to throw on John Carpenter's The Thing. This is probably, arguably, one of the most well-done, best horror films, if you will, and just makes you think. Of course, if you haven't seen this classic, you've got to see it. It is just one of those films that will probably be forever known in infamy for being one of the ultimate in horror films. Of course, it has a sci-fi element to it. There is philosophy and perspective in this film. I couldn't make this list of suggestions that scare you as well as make you think without having this film on the list. I think we're at 18. Hard to keep track of this. Let me see here. This was 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yep, 18. I have to just stop counting and just start putting the numbers up there as I go back and edit it. Last last house on the left. This is a recent release from Arrow. I haven't even opened this actual version to watch it, but I have seen the last house on the left. Tough tough watch deals with a uh, a rape revenge, but kind of a family, and very very hard to watch in terms of that sequence. But it definitely lends into the film itself. And uh, yeah, hard to watch, but of course, one that I wouldn't say is for everybody and for the whole family. But as far as this time of year, definitely one that I would recommend and be a part of the list. Another more well-known one here, I think, is Poltergeist. This is a classic, of course, that should probably belong on all lists. It's a great family watch. I wouldn't call it the most horrifying, but hey, it deals with supernatural activity and paranormal activity. And I think that all those things make you think, I believe in those things. Do you believe in poltergeists and spiritual activity? I do. And if you do, tell me your thoughts. And do you like the movie Poltergeist? It's one of those films that I think scares you. It's good for the whole family. Definitely makes you think as well, too. I think we should be at number 20 here. Infinity Pool. This is a recent release from Brandon Cronenberg. Infinity Pool, and man, this film, it's newer. It's scary as hell because it deals with just some wild, trippy stuff. Of course, Mia Goth's in this. 
You've got Alexander Skarsgård. It's just a great modern film from Brandon Cronenberg. I did an entire review on this, and I'll try to link it up top. You can go back and check that out. But this film, it's just crazy. It's just It shows humanity at its finest and at its worst. Probably more at its worst than its finest, because in its finest, it really starts off with, hey, a couple trying to make things happen together, and you have a writer in Alexander Skarsgård who's just trying to do himself, but then it turns very ugly very quick, and you see what humanity can really become when it comes to money and dark psychological issues. Infinity Pool, if you haven't seen this one, it's arguably one of the best of 2023. We'll see what kind of nominations it may get, but uh, Brandon Cronenberg, son of David Cronenberg, has done quite a bit of justice with this one. Okay, here now we have a recent release, Sleepy Hollow. This is the 4K Steelbook. Of course, this is with Johnny Depp. You got Christina Ritchie. This one's back from 1999, but this is a recent 4K re-release of the film. And you have a slipcover edition that's out there on 4K as well. This is the Steelbook I was able to pick up. It's a great classic Halloween film. You got Ichabod Crane, Legend of Sleepy Hollow. You can watch this with the family, but there is some perspective in this film. Again... You're dealing with greed and corruption, and you've got witchcraft, which I think is also real in life, and just an interesting take on the Headless Horseman. So great Halloween flick. Of course, one you can watch with the family. It does have its scare effects in here and some blood and gore, but it's a great one to check out at number 21, Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow. Number 22, I'm going to give a little bit of a twofer here. Okay, these two films go hand in hand together. I was loving the original, and man, I just recently watched the sequel. So here we have The Shining, of course, Stanley Stanley Kubrick, and then the follow-up, Dr. Sleep. These two films, man, I tell you, I had no idea Dr. Sleep was going to be as good as what it ended up being. But let me tell you, The Shining... It cannot go, I guess, overstated enough. The perspective in that film, it is not just a horror film. You have a kid, Danny, who can shine, right? And the shining really means the ability to see dead people, dead spirits, and the psychological impact that that has on, of course, the father in the film. But of course, what it does to the son. I mean, you cannot go wrong. You got Jack Nicholson playing the father. You got just the entire ambience of the Overlook. But The Shining, it's not just a great horror flick from Stanley Kubrick. This thing makes you think. And then I loved Dr. Sleep, the follow-up here with essentially Danny being grown up and dealing with his Shining issues. And how he's able to use them for good in the end of this film. But man, this is a great twofer, The Shining and Dr. Sleep, in at number 22. Number 23. Slide these over here. This is from Arrow, number 23 here, Dario Argento's Deep Red. This is the second one on the list from Dario Argento. Of course, Suspiria was the first, but another classic Giallo. This one deals with uh, similar issues that are in his Giallo type of films, but I think this is arguably his best. Of course, you have the creepy doll effect here. It kind of reminds you of like any other kind of a doll film, but it's not really about that. This is a famous scene within the movie, but a lot of psychological thriller type of effects. This set, of course, comes with the 4K with reversible cover art has some lobby cards, a poster. I'm not going to go through all of that, but I'll show you all real quick. Booklet, poster. So no lobby cards, but just a great Giallo. And, of course, Giallo's being Italian horror films, kind of slasher type of films. It's a good one for this time of the year. If you haven't seen Deep Red from Dario Argento, Definitely get it on your list. That's number 23. Number 24. This one's different, okay? This is Enter the Void. Gaspar, no ways, Enter the Void. This film, 
It's not a horror flick. It's just a wild freaking trip about death, reincarnation, uh, the possibility of. You have a film here where this individual dies from a drug overdose. No spoiler alert there. It's known from the beginning of the film. The entire thing is then just his spirit floating around, seeing what's all taken place. And wild, trippy, freaking movie, weird ending. This thing has like a no rating. It, there's a lot of sexuality and graphicness in this, so don't watch it with little kids around. <laughs> Warning on that one. But uh, this one, again, I it's not a Halloween film, but it is a horror psychological thriller of a movie that it really took me off guard and by surprise. So Gaspar No Ways Enter the Void in at 24. Number 25, Donnie Darko. This is another horror, sci-fi, psychological genre type of a film. Donnie Darko. This is from Arrow. I missed out on the uh, limited edition box set, but love this film. Have it on Blu-ray. Wanted to get it on 4K. Haven't watched the 4K transfer yet. As you can tell, it's still packaged, but just a mind F of a movie is what this is. My wife hates this because... She just doesn't know what the hell's going on. It's it's just a great flick, and it's psychological, but also has that horror impact. If you haven't seen Donnie Darko, you can stream it, get it on Blu-ray, probably out there on DVD, but 4K as well, too. That is Donnie Darko at number 25. 26, also from Arrow. This is Reanimator. Now I have the reversible cover art. This is what the actual cover art looks like but in reanimator it's kind of a cheesy you know i'd say b movie again but it has to deal with humanity's never-ending quest of life even after death you have this scientist who is dead set on inventing a formula that brings people back from the dead and it's just an interesting perspective film, and it has some fun, cheesy goodness in it, but it's also a classic, a cult classic. If you've not seen Reanimator, it's definitely worth a watch. Let's see, 27, 28, 29. Yep, well, here we go. 27. Getting there, folks. This is also Vinegar Syndrome. This is Sensor. Now, I was very, very, very pleasantly surprised with this film. This has to deal with the video nasties in the 80s and how they had an entire group of people that would be tasked with censoring or banning a lot of these too harsh for reality films that really kind of got started in the UK with this banning and censoring. So you had a group of people who were responsible to watch every single one and determine if it was fit to be released or if it should be banned. And in this film, this individual, she has her sister who's lost and throughout the filming, she's previewing these films, she swears she sees her sister in one of these movies. And it sets her out on this quest to find her. She's been missing. The parents want to chalk it up as she's dead, let it go, drop it. And she becomes obsessed. And throughout this process, she kind of gets intertwined, intertwined into a video nasty herself. And it has a crazy wild twist. If you haven't seen Censor, try to pick it up, try to watch it, stream it however you can. This is a newer film from, I think, 2021 or two. But this is, again, Vinegar Syndrome packaging. These, This slipcover has to do with a couple of the films from within the films. So it has nothing to do with the film Beast Man and Asunder, but you'd, you'd, you'd get it if you watched the movie. But uh, there, I can't really focus that too well. Apologies, but there you go. There's some of the special features here and the film itself. But yeah, great one that, again, it fits this time of year. It's dark, it's twisted. A lot of it takes place at night. Plenty of eerie effects within this film. So check it out. On to the next. Getting closer and closer. I have a twofer here again for y'all. This is Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. This is the special edition Blu-ray package of House of a Thousand Corpses. And of course, you can't have House of a Thousand Corpses if you don't also have Devil's Rejects. Now, personally, 
I'm more of a fan of Devil's Rejects than I am House of a Thousand Corpses. This is kind of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but Rob Zombie's take. Devil's Rejects, sick, twisted, demented. There's a scene in this film where they're tormenting a family. I, I'm not even going to say anything else about it. You just got to watch the film. Definitely requires a certain kind of stomach, but you either hate Rob Zombie or you love Rob Zombie. I happen to be more of a fan of Rob Zombie, but you have a twofer here with House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects. Okay, number 29. This is a recent release, very recent release. We have It Follows, and this is the J card there that's falling off on this from... This is Second Sight. It Follows. This is a great film about... I guess keeping people from having sex, teenagers, that's the underlying message here because this is a sexually transmitted disease that isn't a disease. It's a psychological thought that once passed on follows the most recent person and then attempts to kill them. So to get rid of this horror that's chasing you down, you must have sex with another person and pass on the curse, so to speak. Now, I did a quick short on the unboxing of this. I haven't rewatched this film yet. This is from 2014. Probably, arguably, the best modern horror out there. Just a different uh, plot. It's creative. It's unique. It's not one of those films that has been overdone so many times, uh, although all films are different. But this one, just having that element of a curse that's passed on sexually is just very unique and very different. So that's It Follows at 29, and here we go at 30. This is also, ironically, from the exact same uh, release in September. This is also from Second Sight, and this is Crimes of the Future. This is David Cronenberg's newest edition here, uh, 2022. It had been about eight years since he had released a film. Of course, David Cronenberg has a ton of filmography. His son, Brandon, is just now getting into it, obviously, with Infinity Pool and Possessor, just a few of his great ones. But this is, I have watched this just recently, Crimes of the Future. This is a body horror type of a film, but also great with psychological undertones of humanity that has evolved to a point that they can't feel pain. And because of that, they have to find new ways of entertainment. It's kind of like, what would you do if you have everything else in life? No longer do you have pain. Well, I guess you have open reality surgeries, right? There's surgeries that, that, that they take uh, place on an open stage where they're basically showcasing how the body can behave and how it's mutating. And there's this one main character here on the front that's able to grow his own organs. And part of the entertainment value is to have them cut out live and in front of people. It's kind of an art form, if you will, but there's your back of that body is reality. Man, this one's just trippy and unique and different. And I think some people threw shade at it because it's not a typical Cronenberg-esque kind of film. But what I'm hearing is he doesn't want to go back to his 80s and 90s. So he is doing more of his genre type film in the last 15 years and I was a big fan of this newer film digitally shot looks great on 4k definitely gets the mind turning and thinking and one that I think is deserving to be on this list of scary weird wild psychological makes you think but fits this time of the year as well too all right and rounding out in at number 31 for the 31 days of shocktober october we have Lucio Fulci's Zombie. This is another twofer I'm giving you here. This is the classic, great film that is known as the sequel to Dawn of the Dead. So these two kind of go hand in hand. This is the German steelbook. I have not opened up this copy. This is the original Dawn of the Dead and Zombie kind of known as being the sequel to this film. Now, I don't know about you, but this film has such great horror elements, gore effect, practical effects. It surprised me. I heard how good the film was. This is from Blue Underground. 
Lucio Fulci did an amazing job with this film that really is from, I want to say, the early 80s, or is it even before then, the 70s? I can't find a date on this, and I don't know the exact release date. But I tell you what, this 4K transfer from Blue Underground looks amazing. And if you have not seen this film, it is one that you got to pop in for the season. You could probably maybe find it streaming, but if you can find a copy, be it from Blue Underground or not, zombie the practical creature effects in this it's pretty freaking weird and you even have this this crazy zombie scene underwater with a shark it's just it's pretty wild and it's a good i'd say safe enough to watch with the family but one that if you haven't seen you got to check out from lucio fulci and one of the classics here zombie which is known as the sequel to dawn of the dead this again being from Germany. I'll show you the back there. I think it's might actually be in all German. Yeah, it is. But great collector's edition here. Dawn of the Dead. But really it's about this. And that, my friends, is the 31 movies for Shocktober, October, the season of Halloween that will scare you, but will also make you think. So what are your thoughts on that list? Did I leave any of your favorites out? Again, I know the big names. This wasn't what this was about. But are there any films that really scare you, in your opinion, but get your wheels turning too? Would you like to see me do another one of these types of lists, perhaps for the holiday season? I don't know. But that's what you're all here for. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I hope if you enjoyed this, you'll give it a like, a share, subscribe if you haven't already. But above all else continue to find your own way through your own why all the while remembering life is not in our hands my friends it all begins up here in our heads with that perspective and philosophy even if you're going to watch some october scary spooky movies so i hope you enjoyed this do take care for now talk to you all again soon